Hello, this is Mike at Game from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing default game engine tutorial series. And today we're going to be taking a look at tile maps. Uh, that probably requires a little bit of explanation if you've never been down that road, but essentially what we're going to do today is create 2D levels. And we are going to use the tile map to do so. Now, a tile map is essentially, well, we'll get the terminology down here. Here is a set of tiles. Uh, I got these from um, Open Game Art. I will show you the link in a second. But these are tiles. And what you do is you basically um, assemble these all together into a single image. And this would be called a tile set. And that you can see here. And now, by the way, there's a text version of this tutorial already up and ready. I will link it down below. And it actually has the tile set we are going to work with. So this is the actual tiles assembled. This is a 1024 by 512 uh, image file, just basically containing all of those individual images we saw a second ago. So that's really all that a tile set is, is a collection of individual tiles assembled together in a single image. Now what we're going to do is create a tile map using those things. Now the terminology inside of the default engine is slightly different than what we just used. So you actually call uh, the tile uh, set is a uh, tile source in their terminology, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. So let's, without further ado, jump right in. Oh yeah. I'll jump back for one second. So again, there is the uh, text version of this available. And if you want to use the tiles that I'm using here, just go ahead and download this guy. Save it as tiles.png and you can follow along perfectly. Coincidentally, I got it from the uh, free platformer game tile set uh, available here on opengameart.org. So that's available in the link down below, but you can use whichever one you want. Now just do be aware that if there's spacing between your tiles or if your tiles aren't 64 by 64 pixels, you're going to vary a little bit from the steps we're about to take. All right, now let's jump back in. So first things first, we're gonna have to go ahead and actually create uh, a folder for all this stuff in. We're gonna be creating a level, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna call it, uh, just create a folder here called level. And inside of the level, we'll go ahead and create another folder And we will call it you images. Like so now we just take our uh, tiles image and our editor. Oops, come on. Tiles, drop that into the images folder, and you will see it was automatically imported like so. Okay, good. So now we have our tiles image file to work with. There you can see it in binary form, not a lot of use. Uh, but now that we have that, we're gonna have to go ahead and create a couple things. Go back to your level right here and then right click and do new. And the first thing we're gonna create is a tile source file. And click there and we will call it tiles.tilesource. Call it whatever you want, but make sure it's got the .tile source extension. And then you see over here uh, with it selected in the outline, make sure that tile source is selected. And then under image, we just select the image we brought in earlier. So tiles.png, and there you can see. Now you can see there's a fat grid. There's a grid kind of wrapped around all the tiles, but you can see it's not actually the size we want. That's because the default is 16 by 16 tiles, and our tiles are actually 64 by 64. So just switch this out, 64 by 64. And there you go, now we have all of our individual tiles available as a tile source. Excellent. Now you'll notice down here, there's settings for uh, margin spacing, borders, and padding. So if your tiles aren't as flush as ours were, uh, you're going to have to mess with those values as well. You'll also notice here there's this collision uh, value here. And that's because um, the default engine can automatically create uh, collision convex polygons for your collision objects around each tile. But don't worry, we're going to cover that at a later date. So just ignore that for now. And really, this is all we needed to do. So now we got our tiles defined. Uh, set it so it's 64 by 64, so it looks good and um, is all ready to go, just like we've got here. And really, that's... Um, that's it for now. So now we move on to making the actual map. Now this is the, think of it as the canvas on which we draw our tiles. And we're gonna also make that in level. All right, why do I have a spin? Okay, there we go. I think uh, Windows Defender might be spinning around in the background on me a little bit. So now we just go um, right click level again, new. And then this time we wanna make a tile map file. And we'll call it map.tilemap. Again, I'm being incredibly um, creative with my names here. And you'll see over here in the outline, we've got grid, and then um, it's got a set of layers. First thing we wanna do is come down to grid and set its tile source. And our tile source is simply tiles.tilesource. There you go, now we are actually done. So I'm going to pan this guy down. So there's our, our origin, our current, actually I should probably do it at both your, ah, I'll do it relative to there. All right, so there we now are ready to draw said tile maps. Now, first thing, I don't know if I said this for sure, but when you leave this one, make sure you save it so that it's 
and you know up-to-date version in the other editors etc so now what we can do is come over here and you select the layer now layers are very important in tile maps if you want to draw above or below a set of tiles uh, this is where you would do it you do it in the, the the various layers now if you want to add a new layer just right click and then do add uh, one second I'm gonna figure out why my cursor keeps pausing Microsoft Telemni Collaboration. I have no idea what that actually is doing, but it is killed. So hopefully it'll stop doing that to us now. All right, so I switch over here. You see the layer we've got. And if you want to add new layers, you just set their Z order. So higher Z order means it's more on top. So if you want things to obscure other layers of tiles, that's how you do it. You just create new layers by coming here and saying add. And then we'll go in here. We got our new layer. So now that we've got our layer, let's go ahead and draw a tile map. So we're drawing on layer one. We have to have it selected. In order to bring up your tile, just press the space bar. And then it'll bring up the the uh, collaborate or the um, configured uh, tile source for this particular tile map. Pick your tile and then just left click drop and then spacebar again. Pick your next tile and draw. Let's go to our man and draw. Yeah, let's grab the bottom ones. Like so. Now, if you want to do that over and over again, you're thinking that might get kind of monotonous and you're right, it will. So what you just do is I can right click, by the way, right click in empty space turns you into the eraser. You can see my icon is now an eraser. So if I want to get rid of something, I can do it that way. Uh, but now that we have um, something actually drawn, if I go over top of the selection here, I'm just gonna do a right click again and then just drag a rectangle over those. And now you'll see that's my drawing surface. So if I had to do multiple tiles like this, I can. And that's it. Uh, that is how you draw tiles. It's really quite simple. It's it's a very straightforward, clean interface. Again, space bar to toggle between, uh, right click to do multiple select, left click to paint, uh, right click an empty space to set the eraser, and left click to erase. And that's how you draw tile maps. It's really that easy. Now, if we want to do a layer over top, again, we come back down here. We can just add the layer. So now with that layer selected, I'll put that at Z index of one. Um, Space bar, I'll draw blue. So now you see I draw blue in front and it's obscuring what's behind. Now, if I came back here and instead set this to layer two, one, two, what did I do? All right. It will change the order upon which they draw. You saw they, they changed in the order that they were listed here as well. Uh, so let me just go ahead back to layer two and we'll, we'll get rid of our little blue blob. Okay, so that is drawing our tile map. Now, obviously you're gonna wanna spend a little bit more time making something more than just you know your four platforms here. And eventually you would add physics. We will cover that shortly, but that is the process. It's very simple to create maps using the, um, the default engine here. And there's another topic we didn't really cover here. I should get into that really quickly. Uh, first off, you've got your blending mode and how different tiles are blended together. Almost always you're gonna to wanna to leave it as alpha, but I want you to be aware of this. Now, another thing that we didn't really touch on, so let me save this guy before we leave. So go back to our tile source. There's another option here. So there's this guy, this is for um, the physics. We'll touch on that later on. But there's also this guy for animation. And what you can do is pick a set of tiles. So starting tile, end tile, and have it play back. So if you have say a tile that's a, um, an animated torch or something, as long as there is a sequence in your tile map, you can actually have them play as an animation. So if you had animated water or whatever, you can easily create an animated set of tiles using uh, the tiles, the animation guy right here. And you can add a new animation uh, or you can preview your animation here. So let's, here, we'll do a really quick crap one. Uh, all right, this is kind of annoying. Uh, here, let me see if I, I'll do it as a new one. Add animation. No, delete animation. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight, eight. Uh, you know what, I'll just guess. Um, let's go 16. Nope, uh, 32 will put me there, so 33. All right, so they need an interface, so they need a better interface to this, but 34. All right, so in theory, that should be that tile and that tile, and we will, Loop forward at two frames per second. All right, and now let's, there you can see the result. So as you can see, it's very simple to set up um, animated tiles if that's what you require. You just create them as an animation here. Uh, you can obviously rename this animation, uh, we'll call it waves. 
Um, you can set how it's going to play back, the rate it plays back. Uh, I could flip it around, etc. So it's very um, easy to set up animations if that's what you need to do. Now, I don't, so I'll, actually I'll save it anyways, but let's go on back. Now we need to go ahead and actually create an instance of our tile map. Um, so we've created our tile map, as you can see uh, right here, and now we're just going to use it. So we're going to go over to our main project, assuming you did a default um, new project when you created this. You should have a main collection already defined, otherwise just go ahead and create one. And I'm going to be lazy here. I'm going to just reuse this game object they've already got defined. So let's delete the sprite. If you don't already have this, just create a game object. Uh, we'll even be good about this, we'll call this one the map. And go ahead, right click, add component from file, and then just add your map.tilemap. And kaboom! There is your tile map in your level. Now, if I go back to said tile map over here, and I add, um, let's go spacebar, and we'll add, oh, I need to select my layer. We'll add our wave file there, save that, we'll go back to our collection, and there you can see it is in effect. Um, now, one thing you'll notice here is my grid doesn't perfectly match the other grid. What you probably want to do here is change your grid unit so that they're the same as your tile size. Uh, your default grid size is different from that. So if you want these individual grids to match up with your tiles, as you can see, this doesn't really make a lot of sense to have your tiles looking this way, but your grid being uh, these units here. Just come up here to File, then go to Preferences, and go to default or the default scene editor section, go to manual and set grid size to 64. And apply. And now you will see your tiles line up perfectly with your background grid. And that's really it. It's a very straightforward, powerful feature of the default engine. Um, and like I said, we'll revisit a little bit for the physics, but for the most part, dealing with tiles is very, very, very easy. Uh, that was it. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. Uh, if you'd like to see more tutorials in the like, please do click subscribe. We do this kind of stuff all the time. All right. See you later, guys.